Hi, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and today we're going to be reading chapter 21, which is Reason and Perception, and we're on section six, the function of reason. The function of reason. Perception selects and makes the world you see. It literally picks it out as the mind directs. The laws of size and shape and brightness would hold, perhaps if other things were equal. They are not equal. For what you look for, you are far more likely to discover than what you would prefer to overlook. The still small voice for God is not drowned out by all the ego's raucous screams and senseless ravings to those who would want to hear it. Perception is a choice, not a fact. But in this choice depends far more than what you may realize as yet. For on the voice you choose to hear and on the sights you choose to see depends entirely your whole belief in what you are. Perception is a witness but to this and never to reality. Yet it can show you the conditions in which awareness of reality is possible or those where it could never be. Reality needs no cooperation from, from you to be itself but your awareness of it needs your help because it is your choice. Listen to what the ego says and see what it directs you to see. And it is sure that you will see yourself as tiny, vulnerable, and afraid. You will experience depression, a sense of worthlessness and feelings of impermanence and unreality. You will believe that you are helpless prey to forces far beyond your own control and far more powerful than you. And you will think the world you made directs your destiny. For this will be your fate. But never believe it because it is, because it is your fate, it makes it reality. Let me read that again. But never believe because it is your faith, it makes reality. There is another vision and another voice in which your freedom lies awaiting your choice. And if you place your faith in them, you will perceive another self in you. This other self sees miracles as natural. They are as simple and as natural to it as breathing to the body. They are the obvious response to calls for help. The only one, the only one it makes. Miracles seem unnatural to the ego because it does not understand how separate minds can influence each other, nor could they do so. But minds cannot be separate. This other self is perfectly aware of this, and thus it recognizes that miracles do not affect another's mind, only its own. There is no other. You do not realize the whole extent to which the idea of separation has interfered with reason. Reason lies in the other self you have cut off from your awareness and nothing you have allowed to stay in your awareness is capable of reason. How can the segment of the mind devoid of reason understand what reason is or grasp the information it would give? all sorts of questions may arise in it. But if the basic question stems from reason, it will not ask it. Like all that stems from reason, the basic question is obvious, simple, and remains unasked. But think not reason could not answer it. God's plan for your salvation could not have been established without your will and your consent. It must have been accepted by the Son of God, for what God wills for him, he must receive. 
For God wills not apart from him, nor does the will of God wait upon time to be accomplished. Therefore, what joined the will of God must be in you now, being eternal. You must have set aside a place in which the Holy Spirit can abide and where he is. He must have been there since the need for him arose and was fulfilled in the same instant. Such would your reason tell you if you listened. Yet such is clearly not the ego's reasoning. Your reason's alien nature to the ego is proof you will not find the answer there. Yet if it exists for you and has your freedom as the purpose given it, you must be free to find it. God's plan is simple, never circular, and never self-defeating. He has no thoughts except the self-extending, and in this your will must be included. Thus, there must be a part of you that knows his will and shares it. It is not meaningful to ask if what must be is so, but it is meaningful to ask why you are unaware of what is so, for this must have an answer if the plan of God for your salvation is complete. And it must be complete because its source knows not of incompletion. Where would the answer be but in source? And where are you but there where this answer is? Your identity as much a true effect of this same source as is the answer must therefore be together and the same. Oh yes, you know this and more than this alone, yet any part of knowledge threatens disassociation as much as all of it. And all of it will come with any part. Here is the part you can accept. What reason points to you, what reason points to you can see because the witness on its behalf are clear. I, I think it's missing a you in that sentence. What reason points to you can see. What reason points to you can see, maybe not because the witness on its behalf are clear. The witnesses on its behalf are clear. Only the totally insane can disregard them and you have gone past this. Reason is a means that serves the Holy Spirit's purpose in its own right. It is not reinterpreted and redirected with the goal of sin as are the others for reason is beyond the ego's range of means. Faith and perception and belief can be misplaced and serve the great deceiver's needs as well as truth. But reason has no place at all in madness, nor can it be adjusted to fit its end. Faith and belief are strong in madness, guiding perception toward what the mind has valued but reason enters not at all in this. For the perception would fall away at once if reason were applied. There is no reason in insanity, for it depends entirely on reason's absence. The ego never uses it because it does not realize that it exists. The partially insane have access to it, and only they have need of it. Knowledge does not depend on it and madness keeps it out. The part of the mind where reason lies was dedicated by your will in union with your fathers to the undoing of insanity. Here was the Holy Spirit's purpose accepted and accomplished both at once. Reason is alien to insanity 
and those who use it have gained a means which cannot be applied to sin. Knowledge is far beyond attainment of any kind, but reason can serve to open doors you closed against it. You have come very close to this. Faith and belief have shifted and you have asked the question the ego will never ask. Does not your reason tell you now the question must have come from something that you do not know but must belong to you? Faith and belief upheld by reason cannot fail to lead to changed perception. And in this change is room made way for vision. Vision extends beyond itself, as does the purpose that it serves, and all the means for its accomplishment. Oh my, another challenging reading. Ah. Uh, Someday, maybe, I will rewrite this whole text in a more accessible way. Uh, so let's see, let me find a section that we can go back and talk about for, us, for a moment. In the very beginning of this section, uh, where it says, for what you look for, you are far more likely to discover than what you would prefer to overlook. Uh, we have seen very tangible examples of that in modern day America recently. And, and we see it ongoing right now. Uh, what we see, we see because we want to see it. And the things that we don't want to see, we don't see. It is how, uh, it's how so many things in our world are broken. For example, it's how, um, it's how the parents, it's how one parent in a home where another parent is abusing a child, it's how that first parent can live there and not take action. Uh, it's also how, for example, and this is probably the best example of vision, perception. Uh, it has to do with the explorers. And I don't know if I've told this story already to you uh, in another reading, but there were explorers that appeared off the coast of South America. And when the natives first saw the explorers, what they saw were the little ships, the little like rowboats that the explorers had gotten into and were coming ashore with. They didn't know where these men came from, even though just beyond the men in the little rowboats, there were huge masted ships. Maybe in this case, there was just one but it was a huge masted ship with sails and, and, and uh, all kinds of rigging, right? But these natives had never seen a ship like that. And therefore, when they looked out at sea, all they saw were the little rowboats and the men. Those were things they knew. Those were things that they had seen before. Maybe not these same men and the same rowboats, but the concepts were similar. And so they could visually with their eyes see them. But the big ship beyond, they could not see. So this is part of what this chapter is trying to talk about or this section. Now, in, in, in this example, it is simply their inability to see because they are unfamiliar with what they're looking at. But then this 
chapter all or section also talks about um, if you don't want to see it, you won't see it either. It makes it easy to ignore it. It makes it easy to not see it, not to own it, not to own the experience of seeing it. So perception is a choice and not a fact. So remembering the, the explorers, the fact of the matter is there's a big ship offshore. That's the fact of the matter. The people's perception, on the other hand, is completely different. And it's important to understand that this is going on in your life constantly. You are perceiving things and not perceiving things based on your inner workings, based on your experience, and your belief. So uh, this line, reality needs no cooperation from you to be itself. It is very critical to understand because what it means is, is that there is a truth. There is a, a finite truth to what is happening. There is a reality of this 3D world that we're living in that supersedes perception and belief. Your awareness of it needs your help because it is your choice, your awareness of reality. So <clears throat> then it goes on to say, listen to what the ego says and see what it directs you to see. And it is sure that you will see yourself as tiny, vulnerable, and afraid. You'll experience depression, a sense of worthlessness, that you are helpless, prey to the forces beyond your will and control. So this is the experience of the ego and the physical body that is being talked about here. And just to review, you are not your body, right? You live within this housing that we call our bodies. And our bodies have wiring that are designed to protect us and uh, make us able to survive in this uh, world that it perceives as fairly cruel and uh, unpredictable. That's the physical experience. That's the body's experience of life. But you, you are the thing that animates this housing. Your spirit is what animates it and your soul is why you're here. And so it's very important that you understand not to listen to your body and your, your, the ego, which is part of your body's wiring and what it wants to tell you. It thinks it's doing the right thing, but it's really leading you very far astray from where you want to be, which is in, in this teaching, in your, you want to be actualized in your soul and aware of these dynamics. So let me uh, find the next little chapter to, uh, or section in this chapter to speak about here. This section here, um, this paragraph, you do not realize the whole extent to which the idea of separation has interfered with reason. Reason lies in the other self you have cut off from your awareness. So this is what it's talking about your duality, right? Your physical form and your housing versus your spirit and soul. And so your spirit and soul are the ones that are of reason. And everything else pretty much is, is not of reason because it's being driven by the ego and the ego's fears. And let's see, it goes on. It says God's plan for your salvation would not have been established without your will and consent. Again, uh, this, the uh, language of this writing is, is very difficult to uh, access, but basically... Um, what we know is that 
uh, you would not have come into form without purpose. No one is here in form as a human being without a reason for being here. So whether you're aware of it or not is, is, beyond, is besides the point. Uh, it is a fact that everyone that's here incarnate on earth is here for a purpose and a reason. And the only person who will know what that purpose or reason is, is each individual one of us, right? Only I can come to know what my purpose is and only you can come to know what your purpose is. We can get help in the methods with which to connect with ourselves internally, but only we can do that. And there is for everyone a reason. God's plan, it goes on to say, is simple, never circular and never self-defeating. He has no thoughts except the self except the self-extending, and in this, your will must be included. So we are each divinity in form. And while our individual lives have a purpose, the overriding purpose of everyone's life is for God to experience life through us. So this is what it means when it says, accept the self extending. And in this, your will must be included. I believe when it says in this, your will must be included, it is your third dimensional body's will, your ego's will because it can't not be included because it is a part of you. Ideally, what happens is our ego gets out of the way and we allow ourselves to let go of the fear that keeps us stuck and actualize into the being that we came here to be. And let's see. Uh, okay, let me look again for the next section that we want to of this, or the next part of this section. Okay, let's see. Uh, this chapter or this paragraph here, faith and perception and belief can be misplaced and serve the great deceivers needs as well as truth. So what it's saying here is that you can uh, mistakenly have faith uh, in in things that aren't real or that aren't aren't don't exist even, and you can have perception that things exist that don't exist, and you can believe in things that don't exist. But reason has no place at all in madness, nor can it be adjusted to fit its end. So there is a finite truth. There's a finite reality. And that's what reason is. Reason is the, the truth of whatever is happening. Faith and belief are strong in madness, guiding perception toward what the mind has value. It's very easy for us to make something up in our minds. And once we've made that thing up, whatever it might be, it's real. And, and everything about it will be real and we'll believe that it's real. And if you've been paying attention in America to what's happening, uh, at least in January of 2021, there are a lot of people that believe a lot of unreal things. They're not using reason they are completely uh, off uh, in their perception and in their faith. So reason does not enter into all of this for the perception would fall away at once if reason were applied. Right? You can't continue to believe something that isn't true 
or to see something that doesn't exist once reason, the facts, the reality has been revealed. There is no reason in insanity for it depends entirely on reason's absence. The ego never uses it. And I, I'm assuming that when they say it, they mean reason. The ego never uses reason because it doesn't realize that it exists. The partially insane have access to reason and only they have need of it. I don't understand that sentence at all. Knowledge not, does not depend on it and madness keeps it out. Well, knowledge does not depend on reason because it, it, it seems like they're almost the same thing. And madness keeps reason out. Well, that goes without saying. If you're, if you're not going to, to listen to reason, you're going to be insane or, or mad. The part of the mind where reason lies was dedicated by your will in union with your fathers to the undoing of insanity. Here was the Holy Spirit's purpose accepted and accomplished both at once. Reason is alien to insanity and those who use it have gained a means which cannot be applied to sin. Knowledge is far beyond attainment of any kind, but reason can serve to open doors you closed against it. It being, in this case, knowledge. And then it closes by saying, you have come very close to this. I, I assume meaning to understanding what we're talking about. Faith and belief have shifted, and you have asked the question the ego will never ask. Does not your reason tell you now the question must have come from something that you do not know but must belong to you? Faith and belief upheld by reason cannot fail to lead to changed perception. And in this change is room made way for vision vision extends beyond itself and does the purpose that it serves and all the means for its accomplishment. And so, you know, in closing, this is about being able to see, truly see. And uh, we need to use reason in order to be sure we're seeing and not using our ego and our faith and our perceptions because those all cloud the process. So I hope that this uh, section has been helpful. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me for further support, you can text me at 907-351-3003 or you can message me through uh, any of the platforms where you found this material. If you'd like more information about me or my work, you can go to lindalamp.shop and lindalamp.com. Thank you again. Until next week, namaste and much love.